two more times.
Yeah, uh, I think. Yeah. It's in the room. Good morning. Welcome to St. Patrick's. We are so glad you are here. We have just a few reminders before Mass. If you will, please silence any cell phones or other noise-making devices. Also, in addition, we are asking that all vaccinated and unvaccinated people wear a mask to protect each other, especially our children and the immunocompromised. Also, if you will please take care as you approach others during the service. And if you'll stand and join us in our opening hymn, In Christ There Is No East or West. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We gather this morning with the rest of the, the wider Memphis community in sadness that violence has erupted in our midst in the way it did at Kroger's. And we want to pray for all those episodes of violence in our nation, in this community, and world. And during the Eucharistic prayer, I'm going to lead the Eucharistic prayer for reconciliation. We want to pray for all those who were shot and are recovering. We want to pray, of course, as Christians for the assailant. But also we want to pray for Olivia King, the only shopper who was killed. And she has a connection to St. Patrick's. Three years ago, in the parish in Collierville, she asked my brother, she said, I've never been to St. Patrick's. I'd like to come with you. And so she came on Good Friday three years ago. 
Earlier this week, she and others experienced their Good Friday. But that morning, she had gone to morning mass. And so we trust that she's experiencing now a resurrection and new life. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have life eternal, and I will raise them for the last day. So as a parish, we gather joined with so many other communities. As we prepare to celebrate these mysteries, let us ask for God's mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy bestow we pray your grace abundantly upon us and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven grant this to our Lord Jesus Christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Numbers. The Lord said to Moses, gather for me 70 of the elders of the people 
and they shall bear the burden of the people along with you so that you do not bear it all yourself. Then the Lord came down in a cloud, took some of the spirit that was on Moses and put it on the 70 elders. When the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied, but they did not do so again. Two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad. And the spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent. And so they prophesied in the camp. A young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, one of his chosen men said, my Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. recent Sundays, the church has given us the New Testament letter of James. This morning, it's one of the strongest passages in the New Testament with a punch. Now, I don't know about you, sometimes my mind wanders during the scriptures. I ask that all of us listen to this short reading 
that James gives as God's word. A reading from the letter of James. Come now, you rich people. Weep and wail for the miseries that are coming to you. Your riches have rotted and your clothes are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver have rusted and their rust will be evidenced against you and it will eat your flesh like fire. You have laid up treasures for the last days. Listen, the wages of the laborers who mowed your fields, which you kept by fraud, cry out, and the cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. You have lived on the earth in luxury and in pleasure. You have fattened your hearts in a day of slaughter. You have condemned and murdered the righteous one who does not resist you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. After Jesus had finished teaching the disciples, John said to him, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and to go to hell to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. 
And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell where the worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. The Gospel of the Lord. Come now, you rich people, weep and wail over the mysteries that will be coming to you. Strong words from the New Testament letter of James. Six years ago, my spiritual director recommended that I do something, quote, out of the box, something she thought I needed. She recommended that I put a slice of a day once a week and work at an outreach ministry such as for the homeless or those on the margins and in no way connected to the parish where I served. After giving quite a bit of talk, thought, I chose to go each Thursday morning to Manor House. It's located on Jefferson near Cleveland, and it provides a hospitality refuge for the homeless and those on the margins. Manor House serves very good coffee. As we say, better than McDonald's. It provides a, a, a bag that has things like soap, toothpaste, things we get at hotels, as well as a clean pair of socks. And it provides a safe place for those on the streets to gather and enjoy fellowship and hospitality. But there's one other thing. The men can get showers once a week. And that's the job that was assigned to me, to, to get those, together with two other volunteers, those who are going to take a shower ready. Now, what we do is that each person coming to a shower, wearing clothes at least for a week, if not longer, they get a new set of clothes, and not raggedy clothes, clothes that are in good shape, that speak of the dignity that is our, theirs as of ours. And it's the size that they need. And it's put in a box. And then they go to the shower. And after the shower, they put back in the box all those clothes that they had been wearing. And another group of volunteers make sure that those clothes are washed and sanitized and made ready for another group of people. It's happened different times to me, and I don't forget it. I'm working with someone who's homeless, and at a certain point I'll say, I'll give a second pair of socks or a backpack and the answer he gives me no I don't need that 
I'm okay for now. Give it to someone who needs it. I'm astounded by that. Now, I don't want to be naive. There are some people who come, Sandy, who will get as much as they can and have no sense of others' needs. But, but that comment stays with me. I hear it now and again, and I ponder it. I think over it. No, I don't need it. I have enough for today. Give it to someone who needs it. That person who comes to Manor House must have read the New Testament letter of James. A sense of sharing that is in our lives. A sense of, of being together and not simply for myself. Listen, St. Patrick's, to words of Pope Francis, words that have caused many sectors of society to really turn their back on Pope Francis. Listen, and I quote, just as the commandment thou shall not kill sets a clear limit in order to safeguard the value of human life. Today, we also have to say, thou shall not, to an economy of exclusion and inequality. Such an economy kills. Now, as far as those laborers that St. James says are being used and not given a worthy wage, you've noticed as I, they have been so many businesses trying to hire workers. But if we step back, in a pandemic that has killed more than 650 persons, 650,000 persons, many of them folks who work on the first line, front lines, like serving at restaurants, that perhaps those persons fear for their lives in taking that job. And also know they won't get a salary that provides for them and their family as the church teaches is just. Again from Pope Francis, I quote, the private ownership of goods is justified by the need to protect and increase them so that they can better serve the common good. For this reason, solidarity must be lived as the decision to restore to the poor what belongs to them. That's what the letter of St. James says. To restore to the poor what belongs to them. So this Sunday we gather. And St. James perhaps unsettles you as it does me. So that, so that at decisions that are being made by our nation in this time of crises, through our elected leaders, it speaks so strongly to what's going on in our nation and the decisions needing to be made. But not only that, in our daily lives, sisters and brothers, it gives us a different perspective that we were given enough for us now and to be shared with those who need. Yes, we're all in this together.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Knowing that we are dependent on God in all things, we bring our petitions. Give your church courage to be inclusive and an instrument of peace to break down walls of division and violence in our midst. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lead us to be good stewards of all our resources, as St. James teaches us today, using what we need and sharing with those in need. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Inspire all of us to show care in safeguarding others from the Delta variant and give healing to all who suffer from the pandemic. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Inspire and strengthen first responders, all medical workers and fire and police personnel. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Embrace with your gift of eternal life all who have died, especially Olivia King and all those who die from violence. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, we gather this Lord's Day, especially dedicated to your glory. And we gather with communities throughout this city in praying for those who are suffering from the violence in our midst. Be with us that in our ways that you lead us, we might be truly instruments of your peace and reconciliation. Grant this to Christ the Lord. Song, praising my 
Pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just that we should give you thanks and praise, O God Almighty Father, for all you do in this world through our Lord Jesus Christ. For though the human race is divided by dissension and discord, yet we know that by testing us, you change our hearts to prepare them for reconciliation. Even more, by your Spirit you move human hearts that enemies may speak to each other again, adversaries join hands, and people seek to meet together. By the working of your power, it comes about, O oh Lord, that hatred is overcome by love. Revenge gives way to forgiveness, and discord is changed to mutual respect. Therefore, as we give you ceaseless thanks with the choirs of heaven, we cry out to you, to your majesty on earth, and without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You therefore Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He is the Word 
that brings salvation, the hand you stretch out to sinners, the way that leads to your peace. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that, converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread in his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy God, we humbly beseech you to accept us together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, <clears throat> who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all the bishops, and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our sisters and brothers, and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Oh. 
joined together with the one high priest in giving all glory and honor to our God. Taught by that high priest, we dare to sing. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever forever and ever Amen Lord Jesus Christ who said to your apostles peace I leave you my peace I give you look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to one another a sign of that peace. In our New Testament letter of St. James today, God's word teaches us that we're all bonded together. And so those of you who are with us by means of the streamed mass, very much wishing to be with us, know that that same Jesus who bonds us together as you make your spiritual communion will, will certainly strengthen and feed you just as us so that we can show that unity to which we are called.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter to my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O God, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Now please be seated. <clears throat> These days we celebrate the memorial of St. Vincent de Paul, and it's in his name that we have an, one of our outreach ministries that uh, parishioners work with families in the 38126 who have utilities troubles, needing food, so once a year we take a collection, it's a second collection, and that'll be done now. Now, as I was preaching, I was tempted to turn around to look at Deacon Frank to see if he was nodding off asleep. The reason being is that last night at 12.59 p.m., Bambi and his granddaughter gave birth to their first great-grandson. So let's congratulate them. It was a very short night for them, or a long night at the hospital. Now, we've had our second collection for the St. Vincent de Paul. Please take a bulletin or check our website. Very soon from now, two weeks, we're having our Eucharistic Congress at the Renaissance Convention Center, newly renovated. It's gonna begin Friday night October the 8th with Mass and talks after that and through the day on Saturday ending with the Mass presided by Bishop David. There are some excellent talks and in my flock notes I let you know which ones I was going to be going to. Uh, so I hope that many of us are be coming Masks are required for all, it's for the whole diocese. So it's been a strange 50th anniversary celebration of our diocese because of the pandemic. But hopefully many of us will come and be formed in that. So look over in the bulletin or on the website. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, proclaiming the gospel by your life. Thanks be to God. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. And we pray that all unity will one day be restored. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We will walk with each other. We will walk hand in hand. We will walk with each other. We will walk hand in hand. And together we'll spread the news that God is in our land. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. No, we are Christians by our love. We will work 
with each other, we will work side by side. We will work with each other, we will work side by side. And we'll guard human dignity and save humans pride. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love.